For this third practical application of freestyle rendering, my goal is to achieve like an Asian watercolor visual style. And uh, the spooky tree from one of my previous tutorials will work great for this. So let's take a look at the scene and what we have to work with as far as geometry and lights. Uh, let's take a look at our uh, tree geometry itself, which comes straight from that other training, uh, which means that we have a multi-resolution modifier with a lot of sculpt data, including several subdivisions all the way up to level four upon render time. And uh, then we have another subsurface modifier to add even an additional subdivision level, followed by a displacement modifier. So uh, we're not gonna need nearly that amount of resolution in the geometry, but I'll come back to that uh, to modify it for our needs in this video. But besides that, we have several branches that we will also need to modify, basically make it one mesh with our tree trunk just to make our lives a little easier. We have a ground plane, which won't last too long. And then we have one lamp. So a pretty simple scene overall. But let's modify this tree because in order to achieve that watercolor shading, uh, we will again be using a tune shader in the Blender internal engine. And then for our freestyle edges, five subdivision levels is way too high and it'll take forever to calculate all the edges so we can then draw the strokes. So first things first, I really need to decrease my geometry count. So I'll select my um, tree mesh. And as it sits right now in the viewport, we're up to a preview level of two subdivisions and uh, our displacement modifier is working, but um, I think this is fine the way it is. So with it selected, I'll hit Alt C and choose convert to mesh. And this will apply all of our modifiers exactly the way it looks in the viewport. Then let's do the same thing to all of our twig branches. I'll select one and I know that they are all sharing the same object data. As we can see here, we have 13 users, but they're also named the same just sequentially. So twig.000.001, etc. So to select all of these objects quickly, I can hit spacebar and type in pattern and choose select pattern. And here we can type in a name like twig because up here in the outliner, we can see that all of the objects have twig in the name and then add a star after it, which will act as a wild card. So any object with twig at the beginning of the name will be selected. And I've got extend enabled, hit enter. Now we have all of our twig branches selected. And the same as the tree trunk, if we go to the modifiers, we have subsurface, we have displace, and we want to get rid of both of these. So Alt C in the viewport, again, convert to mesh. And then I'll hit Control J to merge them all into one object. So uh, now I want to combine them with the tree trunk mesh, but first I want to Boolean them uh, to unionize them as one mesh instead of separate mesh islands in one object node. So uh, in order to do that, I will select my tree trunk, add a Boolean modifier and choose the object to be twig. And uh, this will take a couple minutes to catch up because it's starting to calculate the Boolean. And the default operation of intersect is clearly not what we want. So let's switch that to union instead. And uh, to test this, let's uh, hide our twig object. And yeah, if we look in our mesh, we can see that our twigs have been united uh, with the tree trunk. So let's apply that Boolean modifier and uh, unhide our twig object, then delete it. And the last thing I wanna do is uh, also Boolean our tree roots using the ground plane. So again, select our tree trunk object, add a Boolean modifier, then select the ground plane as our object. The intersect operation is not what we want. Uh, we don't want union either, we want the difference. There we go. Going into wireframe, we can see what that will give us. And I'll apply that. Now we can delete our ground plane. And next, I want to decimate our tree geometry as a whole. So uh, select it and add a decimate modifier. And we're going to simplify this thing quite a bit. Let's go to 0.1 as our ratio. That way we have a tenth of uh, the overall poly count. We are now at 20,000. And uh, let's go ahead and create our shader. We can always adjust this number later. And we're now at 20,000 polygons, which uh, is pretty low, but I have a feeling I want to go lower because uh, the result that we get from the decimation is a triangulated mesh that can uh, 
assist in the watercolor feel of the shading. Uh, so I'll go ahead and create my material now. And then if I need to, I can come back and adjust the decimation amount. So uh, let's go ahead and create a new shader. Get rid of the one that um, I left on here by accident from uh, my spooky tree course and uh, add a new one. We'll call this watercolor. And uh, like we did for our Baker character, we're going to use tune shading. So in our diffuse drop down, let's uh, choose tune and uh, might as well kick off a render. And it looks like my light is not positioned in the best place. Let's try rotating it around the cursor to face it more at a front angle like that. And uh, it's definitely not looking like a watercolor painting right now. So let's go back to our shader. And just like we did before, we will use a ramp and uh, make this first color flag have no alpha transparency. And for the colors themselves, if we're imagining painting a real watercolor, we know that the colors are very watered down and desaturated. So the majority of the color will be the canvas. So uh, in order to achieve the final watercolor feel, we're going to have to do a little bit of compositing. But for now, I'm going to treat it like the canvas is a sepia tone. So the color of our highlights, we need to make that match our canvas. I will choose that flag and then let's drag it down into the orangish region a little bit. We want it to be really desaturated and not completely bright like that. I think that looks good. Then copy that color swatch, paste it to our black flag and lower the value a little about like that. And then change the input style from shader to result. And let's do a render. All right, we're on the right track, but um, I have the cook tour style specular still showing up on top of our tune. So let's address that specular. And since this is actually the highlights, let's copy the color from um, what I earlier stated would be the highlights over here in the uh, right flag of our uh, diffuse ramp copy that color, paste it into specular, and then uh, on our diffuse color, let's drag that value down a little bit so that we can start to create this three-tiered type of tune shading. Let's make our lower value a little bit lower, perhaps make the specular level a little brighter itself, change the shading model to uh, tune. There we go. Now let's see what this looks like. Yeah, this is what I'm looking for where you can see three different levels of shading, but everything still feels out of place on this transparent background. So I will copy the color from my specular and paste it into the world horizon color. And now uh, in my render settings under the shading dropdown, the alpha, let's change it from transparent to sky. Do another render. That's more watercolor appropriate because uh, with watercolors, you don't paint highlights, you only paint darker values. So again, the canvas matches the highlight color. Let's see, I think I want to lower uh, the decimation ratio for my tree geometry. So I'll switch to slot number two and uh, in my decimate modifier, let's make the ratio 0.01. See how that looks rendered. That I actually think is going to be too low. Let's try 0.03. That's certainly better. Um, I'm going to do one more at a value of 0.05. Yeah, I think I'll stick with that because uh, we're getting some really nice watercolor style shading through our tune shader. And uh, now we're ready to add the freestyle lines. So let's enable freestyle in the render settings, jump over to our render layers context, add a line set. And for this one, we'll keep it really simple. I only want silhouette uh, edge types to be rendered. There we go. Very standard black lines. Now let's uh, start to work on the line style, which is where the majority of the work will take place. First, beginning with thickness. I will add a modifier here, the calligraphy modifier, do a render with the defaults. And immediately that starts to feel much more Asian, but the lines are adhering to the low poly object underneath a little too closely. Instead, we want them to feel like paint strokes. So let's jump over to the geometry tab, 
and uh, add a Bezier curve modifier. Render that as is. And yeah, things get a little smoother. But I want to smooth them out even more because still we're getting some really harsh edges like there and there, making it look more like a calligraphy pen instead of a paintbrush. So I'll jump to slot number four and then enable a setting up here beside crease angle called face smoothness. Switching between the two, you can see that um, we lose that jaggedness and our lines become more consistent and more smooth. But uh, I want to try and make my lines a little bit more gestural. We can see like up here how the stroke begins to pull away from the geometry. Also down here. I really like that a lot. I want to introduce hopefully more of that. So let's switch to slot number five and in our geometry tab, increase the error value of our Bezier curve to uh, let's try 30. Yeah, that looks uh, much more gestural and smooth. I like that a lot, but I don't really like how thin the lines get um, on our trunk. So uh, in the thickness tab, uh, under calligraphy, let's try the orientation at a value of 35. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. Um, something that's kind of bumping me is the way that my calligraphy strokes are the same all across the tree, including our very skinny limbs, which kind of makes them look a little bit too thick in my opinion. Also, I want the lines to be thicker down here around the trunk. So uh, we can achieve that with another thickness modifier. Let's add the distance from object. And uh, if I render the defaults, and uh, of course we don't have any difference because I haven't chosen a target yet. The target will be the tree itself. Now let's try rendering. Our lines have disappeared entirely. And this is because our uh, range minimum and maximum is way too large given the size of our scene, specifically how big our tree is in the scene. So let's change the max range from 1000 to 10. And we can barely tell, but we are seeing our lines again. But this whole time we've been used to a thickness of three and uh, the max value of our distance from object modifier is only one, which overrides the three. So let's change that to, uh, let's even go higher than three. Let's go straight to six. Now we're getting an interesting result. Uh, our limbs have a much thicker line than the base of our trunk. So uh, to explain this, I'll jump back to the 3D view where um, the distance from object modifier, it looks at the origin point of an object rather than the actual geometry. So as it is right now, we have a linear fall off from our origin point to a distance of 10 units away from the origin. And if we switch from linear to curve, the default curve setup is the same as the linear method, where the left side of the curve determines the edge thickness closest to our origin, and the right side of the ramp determines the thickness for lines further away from the origin. So this needs to be reversed because we want our limbs to be skinnier than the trunk. The trunk is closest to the origin, it needs to be thicker. So let's render that. And the trunk now has the thicker lines, but they're still too thin in general. So how about we increase our max value from six to, let's go 15 and try again. Yeah, that's looking better, but uh, the minimum value of zero is a problem because the further we get away from our origin, the lines eventually disappear completely. So let's change our minimum value to, let's say five, and then also add another point in our curve and drag that up so we get an interpolated fall off. There we go, that's more like what I'm looking for. But what you may notice is that the effect of our calligraphy is completely gone. And that's because the way these modifiers interact with one another is mathematically. Calligraphy being first in the stack with a blend value of mix is fine. But then with our second one, it's also a mix blend type and the influence is set to one. So it's completely overriding the calligraphy modifier. But actually I want all of the calligraphy effect. I just want it to be multiplied by the distance from the object. So let's change from mix to multiply. And uh, you can probably imagine that uh, a min value of five times a min value of one gives us five. So that should be fine. But then 15 times 10 is going to be huge for a max thickness. But 
Let's go ahead and do a render to um, prove that. Yeah, those strokes are way too thick. So uh, the ratio between the min and max value on my distance from object is one third. I'll keep that in mind because remember, I liked that ratio. So let's try 0.5 and 1.5. Yeah, this is in the right direction. We still have all of our calligraphy styling where the thickness gets thinner and thinner and then thicker in other areas. But uh, overall, it's a little bit too thin. So let's try values of one and three for our min and max of our distance from object. That's pretty cool, but uh, maybe it's a little too far in the other direction. So I can limit the influence as a whole of the second modifier by simply changing it from one to, let's say, 0.5. That's certainly better, but let's change it from 0.5 to 0.75, and I think that that will be a good value. Yeah, I'm happy with that. My uh, twig branches are definitely skinnier than the base of our tree trunk. Okay, let's uh, actually try one more modifier for our thickness the along the stroke modifier. And again, keep in mind this will be a multiplier. So change it to multiply. And instead of linear mapping, let's use curve instead. And what I want to do with this is for areas like these two strokes right here, also around the mouth, I basically want to get rid of this really harsh squared end of the stroke. And I can do that here with this curve. So let's try and build this guy so that it goes up then comes back down, kind of a sine wave going from thinner to thicker. See what that looks like rendered. Okay, we can definitely see the effect of our along the curve uh, modification, but uh, I'm not sure that I like that. Uh, maybe I'll come back to it. I will just disable that modifier for now and instead turn my focus to the alpha of our uh, strokes because a key to the watercolor outline is the variation in opacity of the watercolor stroke, where uh, as right now, it looks more like ink. So let's add another along the stroke modifier and basically make that same curve. With this, our stroke starts off transparent, then gains a little bit more thickness in the paint then evens out a little bit, then we end the stroke at full strength. Let's test that out. That's a little bit more like it, but still looks more like a Sharpie kind of running out of ink. And also once we introduce transparency to the stroke, if I switch to the other one, the majority of our strokes look consistent. However, with transparency, we can see the breaks in all my strokes. For example, right here we have four total strokes, whereas before I thought it was one. So this is introducing some problems with how our strokes are being drawn. I need them to feel more consistent so it feels like a brush stroke. So let's see if we can adjust some of our strokes options, specifically having to do with the way that our strokes are chained. Uh, by default, it's set to plain. Let's instead use sketchy. Yeah, that looks so much better, so much more painterly. In fact, uh, I like everything about this except for these two strokes right here. They're way too straight and abrupt. I wonder if I can change my calligraphy angle from 35. Let's go back to 60, see if that helps out at all. Yeah, that pretty much did the job. Let's see, I wonder if I can't adjust my along the stroke curve to help this out. Let's see, perhaps instead of the sine wave going from corner to corner, leaving the end of my stroke at the max thickness, let's bring that down instead and get rid of one of these points, giving us this type of arch. That is identical because I forgot to enable the modifier. Yeah, I think that's going to do it for my freestyle edges. That feels very painterly to me. Uh, all that's left to do now is to finalize this to make it look like it's been painted on canvas. This is a very simple thing to set up. I'll switch over to my node editor, make sure we're using compositing nodes, enable use nodes, and also backdrop. And with shift A, let's add an output viewer node. Then with shift A again, 
let's add input image because we're simply going to overlay a canvas image on top of our render. So let's go open that image, which you will be able to find in the source files. It's called canvasover.png and uh, shift A to add a color mix node to mix these two together. Plug in our overlay image to the second socket of our mix and change the operation from mix to overlay. But um, it's a little too saturated for my tastes. So let's add a color hue saturation and value node after our overlay image before the mix node. And let's take our saturation down to something like 0.5, maybe adjust our hue as well. And again, maybe not, leave it at 0.5. Yeah, that's more like it. With that simple overlay, now we can see that the shading from our tune shader works pretty well as broad watercolor strokes. However, there's not a big enough difference for me in between that highlight color and the second color in our shading model. So uh, let's go back to our material and increase the contrast between those colors. Now try rendering it, although uh, actually before I render, let's drag the overlay from our mix node into the composite node, same as our viewer. And now when I do a render, we will first render the scene, but then it will directly be piped into our composite nodes to give us our final look. Though there doesn't seem to be a noticeable change from the colors of my uh, tune shader. So let's bring down the uh, upper flag of my diffuse ramp just a bit, switch to slot number seven, try rendering again. Now, if I switch between the two, we can see a little bit of a difference, but I'm still not quite satisfied. How about the lower flag? Let's bring that up in value just a bit and continue bringing down our uh, upper flag. Give that a shot. I think I'm uh, happy with that. At this point, I'm just nitpicking. So uh, yeah, I think this looks like an Asian style watercolor. I can now render a turntable of this tree or I can just take credit as a watercolor painter. I think that by now you get a pretty good idea of what freestyle is capable of. I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with, with your own models, with your own styles. So thank you for watching.